Hello, my name is Kevin Morgan. I'm a veterinarian, but I spent most of my life studying pathology, and pathology is the study of the nature of disease. About seven years ago, I got out of bed one morning, and I put my foot on the ground, and it was like somebody stabbed a knife in my heel. It was horrendous, and uh, I was training at the time, but not overtraining. Uh, I actually had to crawl along the floor to get to the bathroom. It really surprised me. But in the next hour or so, it gradually eased off. I remember thinking, that's pretty strange. So I googled these symptoms, and it mentioned a condition called plantar fasciitis. And I was thinking, well, that's a bit odd, because it was right in my heel, and there was like a burning sensation all around my heel. It wasn't really in the plantar fascia, which is a thick band of tissue running under your foot. Anyway, I eventually fixed the problem uh, by using a roller on the advice of my eldest son. I used a roller on my calves, thinking maybe it's due to tight calves. Uh, having looked at the various treatments out there, one of which is called a night splint or a boot, which during the night it pulls on your foot, stretching your calf uh, purportedly. Um, I tried the boot, that actually didn't help. I tried all sorts of treatments. Uh, I asked a doctor what was going on, they said it was plantar fasciitis. And the doctor said a very strange thing for a pathologist to listen to. Uh, she said, uh, well, you have plantar fasciitis and I'll give you some painkillers. And if it doesn't go away, I may have to put an injection in your heel. And I thought, an injection in my heel? And she said, yes, of cortisone, an anti-inflammatory drug, which of course I knew what that was. And so my thoughts went like this. As a pathologist, I thought, does this person really understand the heel? The heel of the human consists of a large fat pad protecting it from impacts, and this is held together by connective tissue, collagen, which uh, resists stretching, and elastin, which uh, allows a springy kind of texture. And uh, I was thinking the heel of the human foot, especially the fat pad, is sculpted by the forces imposed upon it. So if you slide sideways or you land hard on your heel, this is going to create what we call shear stress within that mass of fat and connect other connective tissue, as a result of which it will respond the way the body does, and it will, uh, it will actually design the mechanical structure of that pad to strengthen it so it can respond to the forces imposed upon it. So it's a responsive structure. If you just come along with a needle and inject cortisone or some other solution in there, what you're actually doing is in a way, it's like throwing paint on a wonderful painting or chucking what we call a spanner in England, but a monkey wrench in the United States into a very, very delicate machine. So I was suspicious but I still wanted to fix my heel pain and get back to running because the heel pain was really messing with that. And, uh, you know, I tried various things and then my son suggested the roller. I used the roller uh, because I know that underneath tightness is weakness. I assume my calves were weak. Um, I incorporated single leg calf raises with the rolling and the heel pain, the acute morning heel pain vanished within about two or three weeks. And this led to an eight year adventure, adventure uh, which I wasn't expecting as my real interest is in helping older people deal with aging, but this has become a kind of hobby. As I'm a pathologist and I love to study disease and it eventually led to my latest little book, which I'll talk about in a minute. Anyway, I wrote a blog post about what had happened to my heel. My blog's, blog is all about helping athletes with aortic disease. And uh, about, I guess, three or four months later, my eldest son said, Dad, you need to read this letter. It's from a friend of mine, Ryan, in Dallas. And the letter said that he had had terrible plantar fasciitis or acute morning heel pain. And he tried all sorts of things, including the splint and rollers and icy rollers, etc. And then he read this blog post by some old guy that suggested that he roll his calf and do single leg calf raises. And then he said that fixed it within a few weeks and he was back to running and training for a marathon. And he mentioned at the end of this interesting letter, hey, Nick, 
that old guy turned out to be your dad. Well, that was me. And I thought, oh, maybe I can help more people by writing a book. So with the help of my body movement trainer and wonderful dancer, Rebecca Amos Lawson, we wrote our first book called Fit Old Dogs Plantar Fasciitis Treatment. And I thought we'd uh, essentially nailed it. I thought we understood what was going on. It could not be further from the truth. I had a lot more to learn. And that entire journey is described in this little book, Plantar Fasciitis Has the Wrong Name, with the subtitle, Fit Old Dog's Whole Body Approach to Curing Your Nociceptive Foot Pain. This research led to the conclusion that the pain in our heel generally has nothing to do with the heel at all. It is a warning sign from your body telling you there's something you need to fix. Well, most of you, I'm sure, have heard of angina pectoris, where you can get a pain in your shoulder or in your arm when you're having trouble with your heart, with a potential heart attack. But the pain is not always in your chest. It can be in your shoulder and your arm, which would cause you mislead your, uh, you away from the real problem, which is your heart. Of course, everybody knows this now, and they go deal with the appropriate symptoms for treatment for heart attack. And so uh, there are other examples of this. This could be called, uh, def you know, referred pain is another term. I like the term nociceptive because it indicates that uh, there's a warning. Your body is warning you that there's something wrong and you need to fix it. And that's what this little book is about. And it finally led to my having a pretty clear picture of what's going on and the best approach. I suspect, based upon considerable research with online surveys, that uh, quite often the problem lies in one's hips. And that is true of the first story in the book about how the approach developed here uh, helped a local runner who had had terrible trouble with heel pain, which the doctor said was plantar fasciitis, and it was messing up her runs. So I provided her with an approach to the problem involving stretching her hips and realigning her hips especially the muscles and soft tissue. And within a week, she reported back that she'd run pain-free for 16 miles. And this person is a really good runner. And a few weeks later, I saw her steaming up a hill. And I remember thinking, boy, I wish I could run like that. Well, she's 30 and I'm 75, so you have to be reasonable. Anyway, this little book tells a story. Um, it explains where I'm coming from. It explains the journey. It explains very clearly why quite often pain isn't where the problem lies. The problem often lies elsewhere. Um, I had an example of this, which is told in the book about a terrible knee pain. And the problem turned out to be in my ankle, which I'd broken 45 years before uh, on a motorcycle in a motorcycle wreck. And that story is told in here. I finally, I dedicated this book simply because of responses by people, for people notably, to my work, which was uh, what I would call fairly serious research on a shoestring based on my retirement savings and limited income. And so I dedicated the book to two people. Firstly, to Dr. Ignaz Semmelweis, who back before germ theory in the 1700s determined that washing your hands between doing an autopsy on a woman who died of puerperal fever or childbed fever could actually reduce the incidence of childbed fever dramatically. And in response to that uh, discovery, uh, he was vilified and fired because the doctors would not admit they were conveying this infection from the dead patients to the living ones. And uh, I felt there was a parallel here because when I published my working hypothesis as a result of all this work, uh, I was told by one podiatrist that it was based on BS. A scientist told me that it was junk science, having not fully understood what I was doing. Uh, don't forget, I had a successful career in science and I've published many papers uh, in science and uh, I was fairly respected, especially in one field of research in upper airways. And then a little while later on Facebook, another podiatrist said that my work was the worst kind of garbage. And it just reminded me of Ignaz Semmelweis and it made me smile because I don't think he realized I'm a researcher. I do research. I don't publish 
random thoughts. Uh, there's no sense in that. And I don't believe in doing things that can't be uh, falsified, which is what science is about. My book encourages the medical profession to do some research and to stop these heel injections, which are dangerous and they are not a good idea. Uh, I dedicated the book also to a second person, John, John Snow, a Dr. John Snow, who demonstrated that uh, cholera is carried in drinking water simply by removing the pump handle. The whole story is in here. And that prevented people from drink, getting drinking water from that particular pump in Soho, London, in England, back in, again, in the, I think in the 1700s or early 1800s. And uh, so one observation turned out to be critical. And so I made an observation that's described in the book that convinced me completely that the heel pain, A, is not a problem in the heel, and B, it is not a problem in the plantar fascia, though the plantar fascia can be damaged if you don't respond to this warning, and C, that is not inflammatory. And this has been shown in the literature. My observation con confirmed that or was consistent with that reported observation uh, based upon a pathology study. So I put this all together in this little book, Plantar Fasciitis Has the Wrong Name. The picture on the front is to guide the reader towards thinking outside of the heel and how your brain is telling you via your heel that there's a, probably a problem in your hips. And this work for Elise got her running. She, three months later, she's still running and it has not returned. So uh, that's what my book's about. Um, I know I talked for a long time, but eight years is a long time to do research. And I'm sure I will shorten and tidy up this video as time goes by. But I felt it was about time I explained my worst kind of garbage, which is actually, I think, not bad science, though badly underfunded. So that's it. Wishing you happy feet and happy trails and over and out from fit old dog who will return after this to working out ways to help older people enjoy their later years. And of course, they get heel pain too. Bye.